We meet here tonight clandestinely to publicly, without fear or equivocation, say that we stand up and believe in science and math. It's really a thing. You can believe it. It's fine. Yeah. Let's give it up to science and math. Uh, but seriously, tonight we're going to be inducting seven winners into the Sloan Awards for Excellence in Teaching Science and Math, which with this prize will make you part of the 1%. Not because of the prize money, I mean 1% of the people eligible for this award. So, so yeah, I, I, I wanted to clear, I wanted to clear that up. But it's, we can't think of a more important topic to gather for in 2022 in terms of the celebration of excellence in teaching, excellence in teaching in our public schools, excellence in teaching around STEM, and excellence in teaching right here in New York City. We can't think of a better, better, better way to celebrate. And while New York City is a big city of over eight and a half million people, over a million students in our public school system, a lot usually takes up the oxygen in our home. And you would know better than me what can take up oxygen. But a lot of noise happens in New York City on a daily basis, and we don't have time sometimes to pause and really think of what's important and really celebrate what's important. And today, tonight, we celebrate what we really fundamentally believe is most important in New York City, and that's our teachers. So give it up for the teachers. Of New York City. So give it up for the STEM educators. <laughs> With that said, I bring up our first uh, speaker, who's the president of the Fund for the City of New York, an educator herself as well, uh, President Lisette Nieves. Lisette? Hi, everyone. Hey. Hey. Before I start my remarks, can you just give an extra special thank you to all of them, Rafael Bonilla? running this particular program. He just took it to a whole new place and has inspired so many people with it. And it's a reflection of how deeply rooted in community he is, but how brilliant he is as well too. He's shy to say it, he's almost done with his doctorate, so let's give him some energy for that. <laughs> and I wanna make sure he knows that I appreciate it. All right, good evening everyone. My name is Lisette Nieves. I'm so proud to be here. I'm the president of the Fund for the City of New York. I will tell you that it is great to see so many people here that are in STEM careers. I was joking about it, but I actually feel really comfortable in this group. I'm married to a software engineer, and he's very linear. And, <laughs> and I'm not. But what works, what works about it is just the excitement around how everyday things work, right? This is the beauty of also being married to an engineer and to being close to engineers. And one thing I will say that I think is super exciting about this, I'm also a product of the public school system. I have gone through public school from first grade all the way through my undergrad. And I have to tell you that I know that teachers made a difference in my life. There's a reason why I'm a first generation, right? Puerto Rican, here in New York City, the first to win a Rhodes from a public university, and I am proud of that because that happened because of our public students. So we that we can't produce the best students, they are lying, because we do all the time. Um, and yet we still know that we can push and do better and increase the numbers who are doing well. But tonight is about those who have been doing that every day. So thank you to the teachers who were selected. If you could stand up real quickly, please. You cannot flex, as we say, without the support of an incredible set of school leaders and 
incredible students. So I would like to thank them too. An applause for our school leaders. I also want to say something to all the staff at the fund. Thank you all for being here. Everything that happens here is because someone decided to do a little bit more outside of their roles to make it happen. And so I want to thank you. Thank you, fun folks. Gracias. Thank you. Before I transition to our next speaker, I do want to say this one part. And it's to all the people who were part of the nomination and the selection process. Thank you. I don't get to sit and vote. That's really important. Alden and I, we do not vote. We feel really strong about that. We get the top people to come in and vote on that. We have former math teachers, physicists, you get all of them. They're all coming from all over. And they unanimously supported who is going today. And I want to thank our selection committee. If you could stand real quickly, please, so everyone can see you. And what I will say to all the students that are here, the selection panel is made up of a group of people who have taken math and science as a passion and interest and turned it into the most diverse and interesting sets of careers, right? So if you get a chance to meet any of the panelists, ask them about what was their kind of uh, trajectory. I think it'd be exciting to hear that too. Well, now I get to transition to the next person. We are excited at the fund. We're very, we're very proud about being independent. We do not, typically the only, the only, if you notice this app, the only foundation we've ever really recognized and allowed to brand has been the Sloan Foundation with us. And there's a reason for it. Because we feel really strong about what are A, the ethics, what is their commitment to that, what is the support, the freedom we have, right? All those kinds of things. So we're proud to say that Sloan is a sponsor for this. Um, Sloan has the same passion that we have for this, and we're excited about that. And they also have a great president, who is Adam Falk, who is a theoretical physicist himself, former college president of Williams College, um, someone that has a great sense of humor, but is really happy to geek out with you at a moment's notice, all right? With that said, I really want to thank Adam Falk for being here. He's going to say some comments but also for sponsoring this incredible event tonight. Thank you so much, come on. So good evening. Uh, I'm gonna start by uh, just thanking everyone at the Fund for the City of New York. It is, we are deeply grateful to be able to sponsor, and that's all we do is sponsor. All of the hard work is done by the Fund and the Selection Committee, uh, but we are deeply grateful to be able to sponsor these awards. They mean a tremendous amount to all of us at the Sloan Foundation. So um, thank you very, very much to everyone at the Fund. So as Lisette said, I'm Adam Falk. I'm the president here of the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. And I'm really, I, I'm really humbled to be here with all of you this evening to honor some of the most important people in the city of New York, who are the teachers who are here with us tonight. So probably haven't heard of the Sloan Foundation. <laughs> what do we do? Well, primarily what we actually do is that we make grants to support scientific research in fields like astronomy, and chemistry, and biology, and physics, and geology, and economics even. And so you might wonder, why is it that a foundation that sponsors research is sponsoring these awards for public high school teachers? Well, the reason is actually simple and it's straightforward. It's because at the Sloan Foundation, what we know is that we're never gonna produce the next generation of amazing astronomers, and chemists, and biologists, and physicists, and geologists, and economists, if we don't make, per don't make certain that every single person in our society has the real opportunity to participate in the exhilarating journey that is science. So let me say that again. Every single person must be able to participate in science. And the place that we make sure of that, the place that we make sure that every single person can participate is our public school system. So there are a million or so students in the New York City public schools. And if you do the math, that's about one out of every 300 Americans is currently a student in the New York City public school system. <laughs> so think about that. This is where our future is being made. And it is our teachers who make that future. 
in their classrooms, with their students. So if a science curriculum is like music that's been written on a page, teachers are the players who bring that music to life, who make it sing, who give it meaning, who bring out its beauty, and who leave us hungry for more. That is what, each in their own way, the seven extraordinary teachers we are celebrating tonight are doing for their students. But, and I've read the citations, their students aren't in the audience just listening to the music. Instead, their students are seeing every day that they can participate in science and participate in discovery, and if they so choose, decide to become scientists themselves. Let me tell you, it's great to become a scientist yourself. <laughs> every one of tonight's honorees has had this kind of indelible effect on the students whose lives they have touched. They've helped students to see wholly new possibilities for themselves, for what they can do, and for who they can be. There is no greater gift than that to give a young person. And this is why we honor these extraordinary teachers. And in honoring them, we also must thank and honor thousands of other extraordinary teachers, thousands in the New York City public schools, equally dedicated to their students, just as passionate about education and absolutely essential to the future of our city and our world. So congratulations to all of you, from every one of us at the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, and thank you from the bottom of my heart for the amazing work that you are doing. So, almost exactly nine years ago, I got a resume in my inbox from Sean uh, somebody I did not know at the time, uh, a teacher with significant experience in special education and in teaching music and earth science and a background in computer science. I did what any first year principal would do, completely ignored it. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, that fall, one of our social workers who had uh, worked at a, at a school previously with Shanara uh, came up to me and said, Ben, what the hell? Uh, so I went back and I found the resume and uh, I confirmed that I had screwed up. Um, that next spring, going into our second year, uh, the higher committee did a bit better um, and we were successful in bringing Shanara on. Um, I found Catherine, that social worker, in the hallway, and I said, Catherine, we got her. And she smiled and she said, base just got a little bit better. She was totally right. Shanawa is many things. She's the kind of teacher who cares deeply for our students, getting to know them well individually, their strengths, their challenges, not just in the classroom, but in their personal lives as well. She's the kind of teacher who cares deeply that her teaching is powerful and engaging and relevant and oriented toward justice. Computer science has a reputation for being dry, for being solely about code, for being the bastion of white men. Shadow's class is none of those things. It's alive and relevant and about the students and their world and the ways they can use these tools to improve their communities. Shadow has led our school uh, our work to move toward a mastery model of assessment that privileges student learning over completion of tasks and compliance. She's led the CS team as they've mapped out standards across four years and in the development of a model of performance tasks that she's tried out herself in the classroom. Thanks, Glenn. Um, I'm Catherine Lee. Many people wanted to be here tonight to honor and celebrate with her, but Chris. But luckily I am, and before I share my own thoughts, I will share some words from our community. Shamla is a beautiful person, inside and out. And this beauty permeates not only through her teaching, but also the connections with students. Students only speak highly of her and gravitate towards her as they keep her classroom full before school in between classes and after school. It's an honor and an inspiration to work with her. Shama 
you inspire me to be a better teacher and colleague. Shanwa, you are so deserving and a testament to the kind of educator I want to be. Shanwa, your dedication, heart, and sharp eye stand out. Not many people can bring your special combination of Wigmo and Mighty. You carry it in the hands you use to gesture as you passionately make a point in front of the class. You carry it in the feet you use to make moves like no one else. I see you, Black History Mom and Pride Mom. <laughs> you carry it in the heart you share when you notice things others don't and offer. But how are you feeling? Or words of encouragement. You carry it in your beatboxing and golden laugh. Shama knows that showing up at the school and standing in the classroom is more than just work. It's a calling from the ancestors and a promise to our future. The balm our community needs comes in the form of many self-care kits for staff and a welcoming smile. For the endless nicknames young people give her, Shanyudu, <laughs> she knows what she's here for. A Bronx girl who's unapologetically black and queer, she will not be this. In the words of our Lord, when I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. Thank you for being here. Shama, please receive the celebration from your community today. And my words, Shama, you are the most passionate and dedicated CS, art, and math teacher, <laughs> and many more I have ever come across, not to mention down to earth and loving. Thank you for your energy. It's an honor to know you and work with you. We see you, we appreciate you, and we love you. Thank you for all of the hard work love, and dedication to the base community. And congratulations. Alright, so one of the best things I've ever gotten to experience has been computer science. For me, it's a form of self-expression as I get to uh, visualize my thoughts live on an open canvas of possibilities. Computer science in high school is uh, relatively new and it serves as a major departure from what I've grown accustomed to as a student, you know, such as like writing, reading, sometimes cheating because like, you can't cheat anymore, but if you copy somebody else's code, it's not going to work. <laughs> subject as complex as uh, computer science and one that wasn't even in existence like 90 years ago. My initial experience with programming was rough. It's hard breaking the, um, the logical world apart and explaining it, to, explaining it to the computer. But I soon discovered that it doesn't have to be like once you're right the right person, once you're around the right person. The right person will show you that programming is a whole new world. No longer is my mind confined to the limited parameters of the book. I've gotten to like tell stories, design music, and paint pictures without their specified instruments. It is this style of teaching that makes John Lewis guys um, memorable. It is this style of teaching that makes CS serve as an extension of my human abilities rather than a tool with a similar purpose. Shano's passion for computer science is truly inspirational. For most of us at Bronx Academy for Software Engineering, this is our first interaction with programming. I never thought I'd be spending my teenage years programming applications with mathematics. Our astronomer doesn't hesitate to stay at the school and assist with um, sophisticated programming topics. 
and help her students. Shauna doesn't hesitate to ask for a better industry standard technology for our school. And most of all, she doesn't hesitate to let each one of us know how important we are to this generation. As a student of color, she makes it clear the impact we can make um, to an industry mainly led by white individuals. She makes it clear that students of color, um, black students, belong in the industry. She makes it clear that as students of color, we should not think that we are less capable than our white counterparts. She's lived through racial and gender discrimination as a woman of color in the STEM field, which is why she works to, uh, to ensure diversity in the industry, and which is why she's made sure every second she has with us counts. And to that, I say thank you, Shana Rodriguez. Thank you for your continued hard work. So I've had the pleasure of having Shana as my teacher for one and a half years. Uh, due to COVID, uh, my first year with Shana got cut in half, but still every day in her class in person was something that I could really take something from. She wasn't the type of teacher that wouldn't let you sit with your, um, with people who aren't your friends. So, like, so you wouldn't get respect. She would let you sit with your friends, but even then, uh, I still, I still could really understand everything that Shauna was telling me and really want to learn what was being told. Uh, then, when it just started getting good, it got shut down due to COVID. But then, uh, in, the, in the 11th grade, I took AP CSA with Shano, and the class was just really a great experience for me. Even though it was online, uh, I could really tell that Shano was putting in so much hard work, so much dedication for us to learn the material that we had to learn. Despite being at home, despite not getting that face-to-face -face interaction. Every day was painfully obvious that Sean Miller wasn't having that great of a morning, that great of a day, but she still tried to put a smile on not only her face, but our faces as well. So it's, it's really gonna make me sad to have to leave the base community in two months. But thank you, Sean Miller, for this for that one and a half years. <laughs>
to these companies like Facebook and TikTok and show them how they could be better. She has really, really good relationships with students. Students respond really strongly to her in really positive ways. And she's got their best interest at heart um, and really genuinely believes in their abilities as scholars. Especially last, the last two years, we saw teachers like Shanawa going the extra mile every opportunity, calling students, talking to families, using email, using Discord to like check in with students to see how they're doing. Hey, I didn't see you today. What's going on? How can I help? Um, it's been an incredibly hard time, and I'm sure that a lot of our students got through it simply based on their connection with staff like Shanawa. It's important to me to give back um, to show them that I came out that same neighborhood. I mean, experienced some of their some little things that they might have experienced. And, and I am still pushing myself to do better. I hope I am a role model, especially for the female identified students. I don't see much of myself in the industry. I haven't really had a chance to, to work closely and, um, and learn from or, or be mentored by um, someone who looks like me. So I hope that it encourages them that they have someone to identify with. And I've seen that actually happen even this year because like, I had two students that weren't, two female identified students that weren't doing well with the Python coding, but now they're doing really well with the design coding. I'm just like, ah, so you thought you wasn't able to do this coding stuff, but it really was just the, uh, you just needed something more visual. And just to see them like going in and not even not even needing as much help, and and I was just like, wow, this is your niche. You found it. Like it helps me move further in what I do because I'm encouraged by how they learn and grow. And as a physical tool, 
It made me feel limitless. Yet it has taken me a while to realize that it wasn't a pencil that was the tool. It was me. I was the one making a difference, choosing to make a difference in my life and taking my time to learn what I needed to learn to inspire others because I felt the need and desire to give back to my community. I was the tool that was using a pencil or a pen to do those things. My hands were shaping things from dull to sharpen and from short to new again. I continue to teach because I want my students to realize the significance of themselves as resources and, and world changers. It taught me time to learn and grow and do more than what I thought a tool could do and what I, and what I could do. It took encouragement, belief, and also acknowledgement of something higher than myself that is watching over me, and the shakers and movers who are my ancestors to guide me, and the love of my family, friends, and partners, both past and present, to encourage me and love me, so that I may continue to shine and be a guide for others. To show me that I am more than a pencil, and that it is okay to be me, a Renaissance woman, as a friend would say on multiple occasions, because I am limitless. I would like to thank the Fund of the City of New York for this opportunity to speak and for this award. I would also like to thank my family, my friends, my partner, my colleagues, my great team, as they asked me to say, <laughs> and especially my students who have and continue to contribute to helping me be a better teacher and a better person. Thank you.